Hi and welcome to another Laravel and Vue tutorial. Uh, this is a part two to my previous video which I went through setting up Vue in a new Laravel project. Um, in this video I'm going to go through how we can create some endpoints to get some data for our components. So we're going to be using um, this library called Axios which comes with Vue when you install it through Laravel and all that does is do a, an Ajax request but I'm going, going to show you the way that I do it uh, which should hopefully keep it nice and organized and prevent you breaking things in the future as well so basically to start with what I want to do is just get this component to display some data from my Laravel backend. So the first thing that I need to do, let's I'm just gonna call I'll I'll do it as if it's a blog post or something like that. So I'll just call it I'll just do a blog controller for now. So I usually put any controllers that return JSON, like um, for an endpoint, I usually put in the in an API folder just to keep it separate. So any controllers that return views, keep them in the, the base folder, and then any that return Ajax, put them in an API folder. That's just the way that I do it. So PHP, Artisan, Make. So if you see there, I've, I've added the resource flag on the end when I'm creating this controller. Oops. Yeah, so I'll put it in the API folder. So then if you put the resource flag on the end of it, what that does is it automatically creates some methods in there for you which means that you can use a resource route which I'll show you in a second <coughs> so let's have a look at what it's created so in this blog controller now we have index which is for displaying that would display a list of blog posts uh, we can get we can get rid of this because anyone that say show the form we can get rid of because we don't need that at the minute because we we're, we're only returning JSON uh, store so that'll be to create a new blog post which we'll use later um, show will be just to show us one blog post on its own so if you had a blog uh, a po a page just to show one blog post that's what you'd use to get the data for that uh, get rid of this that's just for showing an edit form, which we don't need. Update is to up update one, which we might do in a, a separate video because that's. I might just do um, create, show, and index for now. And then destroy is obviously delete. <coughs> so then the next thing we need to do is create the roots for this. So if we go into the roots folder. I'm not I'm not going to use the API root uh, file because that's used for actually creating APIs that are used for external uh, for people to access externally whereas this one is is just being accessed on this page from within the same site so you don't have to use the API root because it will have all the token and everything like already already in there so if we go in the web file and then let me see if I can remember this so I, d I usually do slash API and then slash blog whatever the model is called and then it's API blog controller and then what that will do is you don't have to actually put separate routes for each of those methods that we looked at before 
it will automatically uh, detect if it's if it's in if it's just getting slash blog it will do the index if it's blog slash an ID it will do the show and if it's uh, a, I think it's a put request it will do update uh, with an ID on the end which I'll show you that later anyway <clears throat> so then the next thing we need to do is uh, create the model for that so we, we at the minute this is just pretty much a blank Laravel application so we, I just need to add uh, the model for it so Oops. So if I do uh, yeah, I'll call it that. So if when you put minus M on the end, it, it creates you a migration as well. Um so that's created the model and the migration. So we just need to add the migration for that now. I'm going to keep this quite simple just because we're not really going through how to do a proper database for a blog. It's just to show how to get data into this component. <clears throat> so obviously you'd, you'd usually have this linked to a user ID and things like that, but I'm, I'm not going to bother for this. So basically... Uh, I'll just call it that for now. So literally all, all this is going to have on it is a title and um, post content. So what's actually going to be in there. So just two things really, and then obviously the updated that and uh, the ID. So then if we run that migration, after going to my homestead box. If you want to know how to, how to set up homestead, I've got a video. I think it was my first ever video, so if you want to have a look at that. Oops. So the these ones here was just added by Laravel default, but this is the one that we created just now. <clears throat> so then the next thing we want to do is it to actually get the uh, data output. So I've just opened up SQL Pro just so we can see what's in the database. So now we've got our blog posts. For now, I'm just going to put one in just to so that we can output it. Right, so that's <clears throat> that's one test one that we can use. So now I'm just going to open another tab with the same thing and if I do slash API slash blog nothing's there uh, you didn't think it was going to be that easy did you <laughs> so what we have to do now is actually get the data out so if we go back to our controller There is, uh, I'm going to do this a simple way just to explain how to get the data out. I, w I would usually have a service and a repository which organises your code a lot better but I think I'm going to do a separate video on that because I think it would be a bit too much to do it all in one video for this. So for now I'm just going to use Eloquent straight from the 
the controller, which is fine to start off with. But you might want to do it a different way later on. But I'll, I'll go through that in another video. So for now, if we just do plus equals. Uh, we need to add the use. So if you do use app. <clears throat> yeah, so that's outputting this is a, an array, so if you add, let's just add one more actually, just so that we can see that there's two. Oops. Oops. <clears throat> so that's an array of two uh, objects there with our blog post in. So that's. Pretty much you could use that as it is, but I like to do one last step as well. So if what I like to do is use um, an eloquent resource, which means that obviously we're just outputting whatever the, there is in the database there. So if, if I change the name of this column in the database, if we was using this, basically you'd, you'd break the front end if you change the column. But with the resource, you can always make sure that it has a title and a post content. Even if you change the database, you can still output the JSON in the same format, which will prevent you breaking things. So how you do that is by creating a resource. So just exit out of this. <coughs> and then... So I'm just going to call it blog post resource. So it's just PHP artisan make resource blog post resource. <coughs> and it's put that in this folder here, resources. So then we just need to add that in at the top here. Slash. So now we can use it in our controller. So instead of just returning um, this straight from there, if we return uh, blog post resource, then you do collection and then put the actual output from your query there. Hopefully that should work. It should look the same. Oh. <clears throat> oh, it's HTTP. Yeah, so I've missed HTTP out of here. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks exactly the same because it's not actually formatting anything different. Actually, it's got the it's it's wrapped it in a data, um, a data object with which has an array. Then we will we'll leave that as it is because later on down the line, if you want to do pagination, it's nice to have um, the data in an actual data object because then you have your pagination uh, information as well as on that level. Uh, but don't worry about that yet. We'll go into that in another video. <clears throat> so then if we go into this resource now, all it's doing is spitting out what it gets pretty much at the minute. So if we get rid of this, oops, and then we can tell it what we actually want. So for example, if, if you was returning uh, an array of users from your database, 
you wouldn't necessarily want their email addresses getting output to the to the front end because people can look at the re- the requests and then nick all your users emails so what you could do in here is just just put in what you want maybe their name and a, a avatar profile picture or something but for our blog post I'll I just want uh, the ID the uh, the title and the the content so if I do ID so it's pretty much that's all you do so for each column that you want you can just do this and then whatever is coming into it and you can actually do calculations and things on this so if you want to format some currency or something like that you could add you could format that correctly in this part or make sure that it's formatted Um, I'll just I'll name this as content just so you can see what it's doing. So now in, instead of it being called post content, it's getting output as content. So even even if we change this column to, to something completely different, as long as we add it in here, it will al always get output as content to the to the front end. Uh, this is especially good if you're doing an API that other people are going to consume because if you if you change your database you don't want things to break for other people <clears throat> so let's let's get on to trying to in, uh, get that to display in our view component so let's find it so i'm going to get rid of this for now So let's right. <clears throat> so the first thing that we need is a uh, data. Hope I can remember how to do this. Uh, I think it's like this. So uh, the first thing in our data that we need, <clears throat> if you think of the, this data method, it's just uh, returning an object of what to store on this component. So it, it only applies to this component. So basically we want a list of the blog posts and then we're going to save it to this object property. So if I just put posts and then so I'm going to I'm going to initialize it with an empty array because when this component loads it won't actually have anything in there but we want it to know that it's an array and that later on we're going to change that to a populated array so let's I'm just going to make sure that it updates our changes so to do that you just do npm run watch and that will just watch for changes as i discussed in the last video i'm just going to get the documentation up in case i need it because i do sometimes need to check that i'm doing things right <clears throat> All right, so let's see if yeah, so that's it's gone blank because we've not actually displayed anything. I'm just gonna see if it's caused any errors. Hmm. Let's just have a look. I think we needed that.
Oh, ignore that. Um, it's just an extension. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> now we need to actually do a, an Ajax call when when this loads. Uh, I'm going to add one more. Actually, I'll just add a loading function, uh, a loading property. So what we can do is once we start loading in the the posts, we can set this to true and then show a spinner or something like that. I'll just for now I'll just put loading or something. And then when once we get the results back or we get an error, we can set that to false again so that it hides the loading message. <clears throat> So I'm just going to do, let me try and remember this, I think it's like that. Yeah, looks alright. <clears throat> and as I said before, Axios is already included when you do, when you do the setup that I discussed in the last video, um, you already get this included, so you don't have to do any setting up of it. So let's do... We just need that bit first. <clears throat> Actually, we could try it with the... F I've never used the finally, but we could use that to stop the loading message. So even if it succeeds or it errors, we can always set the loading to false to hide that loading message. So we'll just paste that in. So we're just going to want to get, we called it API slash blog. And that's just from that root that we set in the roots folder, uh, in the roots file. So it's just that we're just putting in this, and that's going to get us our list of blog posts. <clears throat> so we can look. We put it in. Uh, with Axios, it puts the response in the data objects, but if you remember back in our resource, we added that data object in our response as well. So you have to do dot .data, dot .data. So if you just have a look, we've got this data, but Axios re requests you to put data as well. So it's, you have to put two datas. Uh, let's just see... Let me just turn off this. <clears throat> right, yeah. So the thing is, it's not actually firing that, that Axios request. Uh, because what you have to do is you, have, you actually have to call this get posts. So this mounted will be fired when the component is mounted to the DOM. So if we just do this dot get posts. It should fire off this uh, once it loads. Yeah, so it's called this blog endpoint there. It's not actually showing anything yet because we're not actually saving it anywhere. So what we want to do is save it into this posts property. So if we do, let me just format this a bit nicer. So what we want to do is, actually, before we start the Axios, we want to set our loading message. So if we do this.loading equals true. <clears throat> so that, 
what we can do then, and we'll put false in that finally, so that no matter what happens, once we get something back, we set that to false. And that, this is probably going to happen so fast that I don't think I'm going to be able to show you it. But let's just have a go. So what you can do then is you can do v if equals loading let's just see if that works and then uh, you could put v else here and this is this is going to have our data in it once we once we output it so let's just see if that does anything yeah so it's loading no, it's not it's not set it back uh, oh, I know why. It's because, yeah, this a lot of people have this problem um, because this is the old way of doing it. It doesn't bring in this. So let's have a look at this. Let's see if I can try and change this to the new way of doing it. So I think how you do it is with an arrow function. Oh, uh, So we might have to ditch this actually. I can't remember if this is the right way to do it. Mm. Ah, that's it. it takes me. I, I don't do this often, so I've I'd forgotten the uh, the syntax. So basically, <coughs> basically doing it this way, it brings uh, this into this method, into this response. But doing it the old way, uh, the 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 old syntax, it doesn't actually bring this in. So if you do this inside here, it won't work. So we just need to create, we, we just need to change this one as well. So. Right, so then we can do this loading is false. So if it succeeds or fails, we're going to set that to false because your user is going to want to do something on that page. And if you're showing the spinner uh, or the loading message, they're not going to be able to do that. And then what we want to do then is do... So we're going to set this post, which we mentioned earlier, and change that to whatever the response is. Hopefully it will work with these two datas. It might be one, it might be two, and I'll, we'll just have a look now. Yeah, so it it's, seems to have worked. I just haven't output it yet. So then how we output it is by doing... This is just going to be really simple for now, just to show you how, it, how to loop through it. But you, on your... You have an element that you want to loop on each iteration of this array. So I'm just going to do a div for now. So you do v4 equals, and then you can do post in posts. 
So what's that, what that's going to do is go through each of your posts from this that we've just set. And then it's going to, you can go into each one inside here as post. So if we just do a title. So that should loop through all the titles, hopefully, if we've done it right. Yeah, so that works. So you get your loading message and then it, it displays them. So then if we just put, put that in a header. Obviously you'd spend more time making it look nice, but this is just to demonstrate. And then we call it content in our resource. So that's what it will come in as. Let me check. Uh, I wonder if it conflicts. We might have to call it something different. I'll change it to blog post, see if that works. Hmm, something not right. So it's definitely coming in as blog post. One thing I like to do if I get a bit of trouble like this is just output it, output the whole thing. So if we do posts, it should output the JSON for us. So we've got title and then blog post. Oh, <laughs> I've just realized it is it is outputting, it's just that I've got it in a H1. <laughs> just change that to a P. So it was working it was working before, it was just that I didn't realise that I'd left it as a H1. So it was just showing it as if it was a title. So how we add it with the content did work. Now if we just get rid of this. So that's how you can get a list of the blog posts there. Um, you can actually put, you can you could have a post as its own component as well. So let's just use that component we created in the last video. So if we get what was it called now? Another component. Let's let's rename this to blog post I'm not sure why it's not saving uh, maybe it's because it's in this let's just stop this a minute And then uh, because I'm because I'm changing the name of it, we need to change this. Ah, oh, yeah, it's it's let us change the name of it now. <clears throat> so I'm just start this watch back up, just so it tracks any changes, and then. Instead of sh what we want to do is loop this component in each um, each time we loop through that array. So what we what we want to do is instead of having this div, we will have something like that, and then we can pass it some props. So if we do, so 
So title equals post title and then actually you can just pass it the actual object. So you can just do post equals post <clears throat> and then copy this v4 into this component. So then that's going to send the post object in as props into this new component. <clears throat> so what we need to do is just let this receive that now. So if we do another one of those, oh no, in this one we do props. I think you'd do it like this. I think maybe that might have to check this it does have quite a good documentation so ah oh, it's literally just like that Hmm. I don't know if it's something in this component or no, it might be in, a, in the other component I've got something wrong so blog, oh uh, let's just check that it's all named right Blog post, blog post. Hmm. Oh, it's asking for a key. So I, th I think how to do that is I think you do it like this. Mm. Might have to have a quick look. Ah, there it is. So we need we need this. Ah. Oh. I thought I think that should work. So I'm not sure why it's complaining about that. <clears throat> Oops. So it, sh it shows that component there, but then I'm not sure why it's complaining about the V4. Maybe it needs to be in. Uh, Let's try a different way then. If I put it in a div. Oops. Oops, just forgotten that. So if we put it in a div, it might let us do it. 
like I say, it has been quite a while since I've done this. Yeah, so if we do, hopefully it'll let us pass some props to each one now. So if we do post equals post. Uh, another thing to note is when you put this in front of it, it lets you use like this. So if you've got in here posts, if you put that, you can use posts there. If you take that away, it's going to just send the string post in as props. So it's like that lets it know that it's receiving an object from this. Right, so now we, now we should be able to just show the, the data inside this uh, like we did before. But doing it like this makes it very reusable because you can reuse these components anywhere in your application. So if we do Oh, we should just be able to do post.title. I can't remember what we called it now. Post content. Oops, doesn't like something. Oh, I took away the, the props thing. So we just need to add this props array at the top. This just lets it know what it's willing to receive as props. So if I just say post, hopefully that should work now. Right, so it's getting that, but I'm not sure why this doesn't work. So if I let's just output the full JSON like we did before. Oh, it's called blog post. Oh, yeah. Because when I copied this, which is what it's, is as in our database, but I should have copied this. So if we just get rid of that now, it should work, hopefully. Yeah, so that's... Let's just put just put a bit of margin on the bottom. So there, that's that's how you could show multiple components showing data from an Ajax call with it Axios. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for that video now because that's quite a lot of information to process. Uh, but in the next videos, I'll be going through these other methods that we've got in here to uh, st storing uh, a new blog post. So you could have that as in an admin area with a view component where you can create blog posts. Uh, showing an individual blog post. So you'd have this as a link and then you show the individual post. And then updating and deleting. Uh, I'll probably do a video on each one of those. Uh, maybe store and show together because show is quite easy. Um, but yeah, hopefully if, if that helps you, please click like because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Because I'm, I'm really trying to grow the channel now. And uh, the more people that watch, the more I could do some more lessons. Uh, and if you want any specific advice on anything just leave a comment and i'll get back to each person and don't forget to subscribe as well it's free like free lessons for laravel uh, usually like, if you went to university you'd have to, you have to pay thousands for this so 
uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you get stuck with anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll try and help everyone. Cheers.